Hello, how are you today? Hope you've been well. I wanted to try something a little different with this look. I saw Jordan Hans a few years ago do a really cool backdrop on her body and a really cool glam look on her face, so I thought let's give that a try since I miss doing glam makeup. I begin this look using white and yellow to get that very pale look, and then I go in with a mix which is orange and white for the deeper part of that sky, and I make the light part a little more opaque because that was a bit of a train wreck. Clouds have no chill and they're random anyway, and we overlap them and cross them and blend them in, so I just kind of lay down random shapes at this point. Overlapping light over dark, going back in later with darkness over some light, you know how it goes. I then take a mixture of black and white to have this medium grey coming down my neck, under my chin, and sort of outlining my shoulders and neck. Around my neck I apply it in swipey motions, but the further down I get, I blot it to make it more cloudy. And just like I did with the other colours, it is more of a random application because I do go back and forth between these shades. Make sure to lay down the base color for the arms and shoulders. Since I don't actually have a gray color and I'm mixing black and white, it does come out different every time I mix it, but since we're doing rain clouds, it works. I add a little more black to that mixture and go in with my next layer of clouds. These will be the clouds closest to us, and therefore have the least light. I've used this color to shade some clouds and come in front of other clouds and create different splotches, covering my arms and neck again, because I do want the outside of this look being darker and the center of the look being lighter. because even the smallest details look really, really cool. And since you know me and I like asymmetrical looks, I've made one side of my body darker than the other. For this next part, I'm taking a microfiber brush and I'm going in with that lightest white shade to create the wheat that is lit from the backdrop. And just like the sky, this color of wheat is going to be in the background. Then I go in with a brown which I've taken and I haven't mixed anything into it because I wanted to give dimensions to this field. And then finally, I use that duo fiber brush and pure black. I'm starting with a stronger hand at its base, and as it flicks upward, my hand lifts off of my body, giving it that light hand effect. And I'm making sure to set the wheat off in different directions because I'm assuming it would be windy. Taking a fine detailed brush, which I actually think is a watercolor brush, I'm taking just black, and I am creating a scarecrow. I start, of course, by lining out the stand, which gives me a base for where my scarecrow will be, and also keeps it centered. Now. Something happened here as I was drawing the scarecrow. I, I pulled you in so you could see what I was doing because the scarecrow has more detail than any part of this look. And then I got really in the zone and you missed it, sorry. Basically, it's just a floppy male figure, but I'm creating all of these little ripples in his clothing and his hat that's coming down below his arms. So any kind of silhouetted version of that, like a ragdoll looking thing, works. I think that having tattered clothing off in the wind is very creepy. So I added that, but you don't have to. I just think it gives it a little extra something. And whatever I've done to his coat, I've also done to his sleeves. I really wish you saw it. And since I'm painting this with a detailed brush, there are parts of this scarecrow silhouette that I've missed, so it does look sort of blotchy, which is why I go in in a second with black and create more shadows onto the back of him, where it's darker. I go back in with that black again, which seems to be darker, so yeah, the other one had white in it, and I create the foreground wheat. And now, let's do some makeup, because we haven't done makeup on this channel in a very long time. I start by applying a light layer of concealer to my eyelids and under my eyes, and I blend everything in with a beauty blender. To do my eyebrows, I've kind of changed it up a little bit. I go in with an eyebrow pencil and then a clear eyebrow brush. Everything will be listed down below because I don't have them in front of me now, but 
Yeah, of course I'm gonna go in with the Gemini palette. Did you expect anything less? I'm gonna use Bonnie and a pencil brush on the outer crease and on the inner crease of my eye. We're gonna create a halo eye today with the colors that we've used on our body. I figured it'd be fun to have themed glam looks considering when I actually do go out for Halloween, I am wearing a glam look. So after I've gone in with my pencil brush, I blur it out with my blending brush. Now, this look has a lot of back and forth, so don't worry if it doesn't look too dark at first, we'll go back in a lot. I decided to use concealer now to brighten the center of my eye. Usually like a cut crease is done, but only because I'm using black and pale yellow. I figured they'd get lost and muddy, so I did it this way. And to do this, I've just used a little bit of concealer on a flat brush and I've applied it on my eyelid, avoiding any harsh lines and also avoiding either side of the black. Next up, I take Luna. It looks kind of dark now, but it will look really, really bright later. You saw the beginning, you saw how it's gonna turn out. And all I do here is just pat it on top of that concealer, setting the concealer and also just applying the color. No blending here is necessary. Next, I use Lorelei and I apply that between Luna and Bonnie. You can sort of see where this is going. And I keep going back in with Luna as well to brighten that center. I go back and forth between Lorelei and Luna now until I get the shape that I want. And here I've taken a clean fluffy brush and I'm just blurring out the ends that seem a little too harsh. Again, touching up Bonnie with my pencil brush just to bring it out a little more because it was kind of losing its drama and giving it more of a shape since before we blurred everything out. And now is foundation time. Everything again will be listed down below, but I use my foundation all over my face like you do with my beauty sponge. And the concealer that I used before, I'm just putting a light layer of concealer now under my eyes, over my nose, my forehead, above my lip and my chin. I normally don't do this little part under the cheekbones, but considering I wanted this look to really pop, I gave it a try today and I actually really liked it. It made me look a little more hollow, which was sort of the point. Make sure you set everything with your setting powder. So now under the eye, I do want to continue the halo look. I've gone in with Bonnie on the inner and outer parts of the under eye. I do add concealer to brighten down that under part and I do use Lorelei at this point. I don't go in with Luna on the bottom because I wanted you to see that yellow. For eyeliner, I don't normally like doing eyeliner with halo eye looks because I think it messes up all the blending, but I've done a bit of a wing on the outside and I've also extended it to the inner corner. I thought that it would fit since the scare Crow has, you know, tapering pieces of fabric. I figured the eyeshadow should have tapering something as well. Then align the waterlines. I applied lashes off camera because it took me a little too long and I applied my Better Than Sex mascara on top of that to give that extra drama. And make sure if you do this look to put mascara on the bottom lashes as well. Okay, don't get mad. My camera stopped working and I used Lorelei from the Gemini palette and I did a sort of bronzer blush look and I took that shadow up into my temples, under my chin and on my nose like a contour. For my lips, I'm using the Stone Lip Liner by MAC. The lipstick that I've gone in with is Whirl, which you don't see that, because I've covered it up with a yellow cream paint from my Ben Nye FX palette, just to give it that sickly tinge. And on top of that, I set everything with Luna. And that's the final look. I hope you enjoyed this one because I think I fell in love with this whole process. I loved that I was able to do both glam and body painting. So I'm considering doing the rest of my Halloween looks like this because it's just different. And I had so much fun making it and I hope you liked it too. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.